Hey friend, I want to thank you for joining me today. At Out of the Box Ministries, we believe that a powerful and vibrant experience of spirituality in the Christian faith is about more than believing that God exists or that Jesus died on the cross so that we could one day get to heaven. God is a loving Father, and like every good and loving Father does, He longs for, He desires to see His children experience success in all areas of life. And that's why He's given us His Word, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. And hidden in the Bible, hidden in this book, in the Proverbs, in the parables, in the poems, God has hidden nuggets treasures of knowledge and wisdom that he longs for us to seek out that we might experience the abundant life that he has for us. As it says in Proverbs 25 too, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to seek it out. And today we're going to look into the treasure of God's word and his wisdom. And we're going to look into what it means to have a right perspective, a good eye, a good and clear vision. You see, lately I've been struggling, especially in this season, with having bad allergies. And when allergies kick in, sometimes I forget to take my medicine for a couple days. And then all of a sudden I get these itchy, watery eyes that burn and sensitive to light. Not only is it uncomfortable, but it's unattractive. And it makes it hard to see, to be able to see where I'm going and what I'm doing. And Jesus told a similar story about having that kind of eyesight, that good and clear eyesight, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So today we're going to look into the words of Jesus found in Matthew 6, 22 and 23. And we're going to study the scriptures and what it says about how the value of having a good perspective, a good eyesight, a good vision, and a clear, optimistic attitude, the value that that brings to our life. Before we get into that, I want to give a shout out. And this week's shout out goes out to Johnny. Johnny, my son, tells me that you listen to our messages on the mobile app. I want to thank you for that. And I hope that this ministry continues to bless and encourage you. So let's start off by reading the words of Jesus found in Matthew 6, 22 and 23. He says, your eye is the lamp of the body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But when your eye is unhealthy or dark, your whole body will be filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. And I think Jesus was really talking about our ability to see clearly. You know, sometimes we have minds that are open and bright and we're optimistic and we're full of faith. But sometimes we can get really down and pessimistic and have a dark mind. You know, the Bible says that as a man thinks, so is he. And it's that understanding that how we look at things, how we think about the world is going to affect how we experience things and what we accomplish. The Bible also says, to the pure, everything is pure, but to the wicked, to the dark, everything is dark and wicked. And you had those people in your life. It's like no matter what you say, they can twist it the wrong way. They can turn it to a negative or they can turn it to an evil intention thing. But then you have those people who seem to live in the joy and the hope and maybe a little bit naive or maybe choosing to be naive and just being innocent. The Bible tells us, and Jesus says, that we are to be as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents. And so it's not that understanding that sometimes people think that if you're a glass half full kind of person, that if you're optimistic, it means, oh, you're just naive, you're just stupid, you're just not paying attention. But there's a difference between being open-minded and being negative. And so we want to talk about the values of having a clear eye, having a good eye so that our whole body, our whole life is full of light. Because the alternative is that when your eye is bad, when your eye is dark, the whole, your whole life is darkness. Your whole life becomes bitter and negative. And sometimes we can even think in our own human wisdom that, oh, we're just being wise. And that this, this negative attitude, this, this idea and this mindset and perspective that everything is always going to go wrong and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world is wisdom. That it's light. But if you think that is light, it's even deeper. Instead of saying, yeah, I, I struggle with a negative attitude. No, this is how it's supposed to be, how it has to be. And so I want to look today and what the scripture tells us 
about the value of having a good eye, having an open mind, having an optimistic attitude. The first is having a good eye will enhance your perspective. You see, often in life, it's how we live and how we look at things that will affect how we tackle things. It's having that that idea. You know, we all face challenges. In the, in the world in which we live, everybody lives in a broken world. But the thing is, how do you look at it? Very often, you'll have different kinds of people, and one person will say, oh, it can't be done. But the other person, and that's the person with the bad eye, but the other person with a good eye, the eye full of light, will say, okay, it's challenging, it's not easy, but how can it be done? And there's the difference in that understanding of, you know, it can't be done, or how could it be done? It's not possible, or how is it possible? And I think this is really the value in understanding of a, instead of asking, why not, why me? Why do I have to struggle? Why how do I have to suffer? In life saying, why not me? When we see other people succeeding in life and other people achieving great heights, looking at them and saying, oh, I never take a break, or looking at them and saying, why can't I do that? What, what would be, have to be different? What would have to be true in order for me to experience that? What would have to happen in order for that to be true in my life? And that's having a good eye. In Proverbs 25, 19, it says, the sluggard says, I can't go out there. I can't go to work. There's a lion in the city and I'll get hurt. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means sometimes we use our fears as an, uh, an excuse for laziness. Well, I'd try that, but I know it's always going to go bad for me. I know something's going to happen. There's something bound to go wrong. Again, that's having that negative attitude, that not having that open-minded optimism. It's about, not about being naive, but about being overly critical. Well, this always goes wrong or that's bound to happen. Guess what? In life, we are bound to face trials and tribulations and struggles and challenges. That's just the reality in the broken world in which we live. Jesus himself told his disciples, in this world, you will have trouble. But fear not, he said, I have overcome the world. And so it's that understanding of having that right perspective, having that good eye, having that eye that is full of light, it gives you the ability to say, yeah, there's going to be challenges, but there's also a way to overcome those challenges. And when you're looking up, when you're looking for opportunities, instead of always looking for things to go wrong, you're going to end up seeing things from a different perspective. Uh, very often we realize you're never going to find something you're not looking for. If you're not looking for a solution to your problems, you're not going to find it. If you're not looking for a way to overcome, you're probably not going to just stumble into success. But when you look for things, then that's when you start to find them. Now, I'm not saying that everything that you look for, you're going to find. But I guarantee that everything you're not looking for, you won't find. Jesus said something similar when he was talking about how the world was going to end and in the end times. And in Luke 2.18, he said, and when you see these things, look up for your redemption is near. In other words, he's telling us in our own lives, when we see challenges, when we see struggles, not to just say, oh, it's all falling apart, everything always goes wrong, but when we see these challenges and these struggles and these problems, look up, have an open mind, because God is making a way. There is something to overcome. There's a way around what you're facing. There's a way over what's challenging you, but you have to look up. A lot of people with that dark mindset, that negativity, are just always looking down. And all they see is the dirt in front of them. All they see is the problems. But when you want to really succeed, having that good eye that Jesus calls us to have, you need to be able to look up. Look up into the brightness. Take off your sunglasses and really be able to see clearly everything around you. There are always a ways to overcome things. There's, there's bad things, but there are good things in life. Not every day is good, but you can find something good in every day. That's a plaque I read recently. But not only that does having a good eye give you a better perspective, having a good eye will lead to promotion. Now, understand that I was looking, thinking about that, and having a good eye, having a good attitude, having optimism will lead you and enhance you in promotion, enhance you that you are for motion. See, if you think that nothing ever goes right and everything's always going to fall apart, you're not going to have the motivation to be active, to be busy, to be trying. You're just going to sit around and say, nothing ever goes right. But when you have a good eye, when you have a clear vision, then you're able to say, okay, there's a reason to work. There's a reason to try. There's a reason to keep going and keep doing. 
So often in my life, I've had people tell me, oh, you can't do that, or that's never gonna work. And that's a bad negative mindset. That's not having a clear eye. But when you have a clear vision, then you're able to say, okay, there's a reason for I'm working. I, I may not see everything work out right now, but I know that things are gonna work for, out for my good. That's what Romans says. All things work together for the good of those who are called according to God's purpose. And again, there's that understanding that if you have this good eye, this optimistic eye, you understand that there's a reason for doing what we do. There's, a, there's something to be achieved, something to be accomplished. Yeah, I think I've realized that a lot of people who've experienced success and who've been successful in life know the value of hard work, know the value of not getting everything right the first time, but getting back up and trying again. <laughs> Most people who have really been successful in life will tell you that there's a simple key to it. Work your butt off for 20 years and you can too can experience overnight success. You see, we look around us and we see the people who seem to come out of nowhere and succeed, but we don't realize that what they had was that optimistic attitude that they kept trying, they kept learning, they kept going, even when things didn't seem to work out. They had a good eye. There's like, you know what, there's got to be something that's going to work. And so often we have to go through that process in life of learning from our failures, learning from our stumbling. And very often people who do great businesses or do great things end up learning something or pursuing something or accomplishing something that wasn't what they started when they set out. A lot of the process is learning what you want to do or learning to adapt and change in the midst of the journey. And it's all about having that good eye, that thing that says things will work out eventually. It's about having that optimism. Even when things seem to be falling apart or even when everyone else tells you it can't be done, the people who really succeed, the people we look up to are the ones who overcome, who overcome by being diligent, by keep going even when all hope seems lost. You know, Hebrews says that faith, that good eye, is a substance. It's that character of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen or not seen by others. In Psalms, it says that without a vision, people perish. But he that keeps the law is happy. And it's un that understanding that when we see clearly that there's got to be a way, there's got to be a way to be able to move forward and to achieve and to experience it. When we have that good eye, it says, I just may not be able to see it. It's probably just over this next challenge, just over this mountain, just past this problem, if I can just get there. And it's having that good eye. But also it's the understanding of that good eye leads to promotion or good motivation, but a good eye and a clear eye preserves. And it's that being willing to have that open-mindedness, to being open and looking around you, and not just looking at what everybody else tells you is true. David went through a lot of difficulties, and in Psalm 95 he writes, they laid a net for my feet but when I was bowed low, when life was difficult. They dug a pit for me, but they fell into it. Guess what? There's going to be people out there in your life who are going to try to trip you up, who are going to rejoice when you fall and when you fail, and maybe who will be dishonest and try to lay a trap for you. But when you have an open mind, when you have a clear mind, when you have a good eye and you're looking at all the possibilities and you're not relying on the wisdom of men, but relying on the wisdom of God and being open, you're less likely to fall into temptation. You'll be able to see a way out. You'll be able to see the traps that are laid for you before you step into them and realize that very often the people who try to trip you up will fall into their own traps. That's a promise given over and over again in the Bible. But also in the, in the letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes that there is no temptation that is not common to man. But when God allows us to go through temptation, he will make a way for us to get out of it. And really what we need to do is in that moment, we all face temptations. We all have this, this human nature that desires sin, that desires the things that are contrary to God's word. And we all experience temptation, but God has promised he will never give us more temptation than we can handle. He'll never let too much temptation come into our lives and he will always make a way out. The thing that we need to do is have an open and clear mind to be able to and willing to look for that way out. Look for that way to get out of temptation. Look for that door to get past that trap that the enemy of our souls 
disciples has laid. You see, a lot of times we fall into these temptations, but we don't have to. If we have a clear, good, and open mind, if we believe that God is good, that He is a protector, He's a provider, He's making a way, and He has given us a way out, sometimes what we do is we end up falling into temptation when we think there's no possible way that I can experience success unless I give up my integrity, or unless I cheat, or unless I steal, or unless I lie. Very often what ends up happening in our lives is we we end up doing the things that are less than good, less than God-honoring, because we think that's the only only way in which to get what we want. And yet God has promised that when we have an open and faithful mindset, a perspective, we will be able to see that God is making a way and opening doors if we look diligently for Him. If we have that good eye that God is good. Einstein once said, there's one question that every person has to ask themselves. It, do we live in a good universe or a bad? Or maybe better put, is God a good God or a bad God? And if you believe that God is good, that He is a protector, that He is a provider, and you're really convicted of that, because a lot of people say it, but when it comes down to it, they live their lives as if they don't trust Him to provide or to protect or to make a way. When we're really convicted of that, even when things seem totally hopeless and totally lost, and we're in the darkness, we will know that there is a light within us, that God will make a way, that He will let His Word shine a light on our lives. Psalm 119 says, God's Word is a lamp unto my feet. And so when we learn to live a life with a good eye, having a good perspective, realizing that God is good, we will be able to see a way out of temptation. Now, of course, there's this understanding of a lot of people identify themselves, I'm a glass half empty person, or I'm a glass half full kind of person, as if that's all there is to it. That's just the way I've always been. And yet Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus makes a promise all throughout the scriptures that he is making things new. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Now, maybe we can't get past our own human nature, but God, if we submit and surrender ourselves to Him and invite His Spirit into us, He will give us a light in the darkness. He will fill our lives with light. He will give us a good eye and the ability to see how His hand is at work and has always been at work. Anyone who's been walking with Jesus for any length of time can attest and testify to the fact that they look back on their lives and they say, when things just seem to work out, God was there rescuing me from that. Jesus was there saving me from that. I wouldn't have gotten through this or through that or been down that road or around that bend had not God been watching over me, leading me and guiding me. And He promises to do that if we su submit and surrender ourselves to Him. Have you done that today? I hope and pray that you have and that you continue to, and that you continue to allow Him to be a light in your life, because Jesus is known as the light of the world, so that He can give you a good eye and fill your heart, fill your life, fill your mind with light and goodness, so that you will have a good eye and be able to see clearly all that God has for you to experience, to achieve, and to accomplish for His kingdom, His glory, and your benefit. Well, I want to thank you for joining me, and as always, I hope that this message has challenged, inspired, and encouraged you. And until next time, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I.